So my name is Kevin. Uh, I also go by KB, the boss from shiftermagazine.com. Um, first of all, I just want to say congratulations on, on the show. We got to see the first two episodes and like we, we absolutely loved it. Um, love seeing ourselves represented on on small screen. In, I mean, on the small screen in Canada, it doesn't usually happen a lot. So uh, it felt really good to kind of to, to see our culture represented on screen. Um, my first question is for Olinike. Uh, my wife, my wife was like, make sure to tell her I love her. <laughs> this morning, she's like, you got to tell her I absolutely love her. So my wife says she loves you. Um, Thank you. I'm yeah. blushing now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um first of all i love i loved the character of of miss queenie and I, I was actually surprised to see you in that kind of character it looked like just a look like a lot of fun to portray like how much fun was it um just portray, portraying the character of, of uh, miss queenie it was a lot of fun because i get to mess with uh junior all the time mm. you know it's like a cat playing with her 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 prey and uh that was a lot of fun to engage in and I mean like the, the role is something like I, I've been saying it hasn't been written too often um, mm -hmm. especially that time um, like a, a character depicted in that time so you don't get to see powerful women like that and mm -hmm. I just admired her so much that and I'm I, the thing is I had been talking to um, the creators uh, Bruce and Arnold for quite a quite some time about it and it was just a matter of if I was if schedules gonna were gonna fit, and I mean the universe let that happen, right? Um, but they 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 tagged me a long time ago that I was willing to go to all kinds of different lengths to to depict this human being as best as I can because she's a hero at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah, a hero in our community. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, and yeah, I just loved. I loved the strength um, that she, the character, just kind of exuded, and that you exuded, just for, you know, portraying her. So definitely, um, and for you, Amal. Uh, first of all, I, I loved, I loved seeing the, the Jamaican accent being done justice on 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 the small screen. Because I was saying it, it's kind of one of the most butchered accents in all of like TV and, and film, <laughs> you know. So my lad, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go on with the thing. We should do the rest of it in Patso anyway, innit? Well, I, I'm, well, my family's from Barbados, so I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. do the Jamaican. I can't do the Jamaican accent. Yeah, but How about that? <laughs> that, that? That's Trini. That's Trini. Trini. But um, let <laughs> me the Persian one then. No, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Not I'm not doing that. that. Um, but yeah, so for you, like, where, where does this, you know, being a part of this, this production, like, where does this kind of rank for you when it comes to just, you know, roles that you've, you've, you've had a chance to portray so far in your career? Um, it ranks highly. It ranks highly. It's the type of it's the type of project that um, I, it's a really complex character and I've, I've been gifted quite a few of those. Um, and and it, it's a t the time and space is what I'm particularly interested in, 1920s. Mm -hmm. and, and through my career as an actor right now, I'm actually, I've actually charted my way all the way through. I've done 20s, most recently gone back to the 60s for the MLK joint. Um, and so it, it ranks highly, and uh, I think there's a synergy to the work that happens in my career anyway, you know, and so um, I enjoyed it, um, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing where he goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and for you, uh, for you, Lauren, I, I, my, my wife particularly loved, loved your character. Um, there's, there's, a, there's an interesting dynamic there to seeing you as kind of a, you know, darker skinned kind of woman. And, you know, and kind of just a little bit of that, those race relations of the time and you kind of having to play play the, the background. Was there any sense of, of pride for you just as a, a darker skinned woman to kind of bring that particular representation to the screen? Did you feel maybe any sense of pride or any responsibility in, in, in portraying that role? Completely. I felt all the pride in the world, especially because her character description, they were looking specifically for a dark skinned girl with, you know, everything else that it came with. Um, so yeah, I was I was very honored, especially the fact that colorism was painted throughout her storyline. You know, I mean, we'll see as 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 the episodes um, progress. I mean, even just some of the the names I get called by other uh, black people. You know, I think it's really important to touch on that, especially colorism never really stopped, it never went away. It just um, continues. You know, no matter how much we progress. So I think it's it's really cool to bring. You know, just pieces of that to the screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for you as well, Alina, mean, did you feel that as well? Just kind of as a because I know because I know with with you know, there's obviously an openness now to just telling black stories, but they, they still still tend to 
gravitate towards us light skinned folk. Uh, <laughs> did you did you kind of did you feel did you feel it for yourself like because you know again like the the, the the representation that you bring is something that we still don't see um, when it comes to the small screen. Um, is that something that you particularly felt a sense of pride in or, or responsibility? Well, I mean, you've got Lauren, you've got Muna, you've got me. That's huge. That's mm -hmm. that in itself is groundbreaking, right? Um, because I mean, I don't know if you ladies have had this, but I have always been told this is bull crap. Like, you know, you're too exotic, but I I knew it meant I was too dark. And the thing is, I'm not even I'm not even as dark. Uh, like I'm I'm I would say I'm a medium. I'm not sometimes I'm dark skin when I get a great tan. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, yeah. to say I'm too dark or too exotic. So any shades coming af like that are darker than me, I'm not even getting an opportunity. And so mm -hmm. this has created that opportunity to break those barriers and those stereotypes of light skin, dark skin. How about who does the job well? Mm -hmm. So no, we want to make sure we did a great job for the entire community and not just mm -hmm. the dark skin community. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Um, and for and for Ronnie, um, your your character is is particularly my favorite character uh, so far in the um, in in the series. Um, I, you know, obviously, you know, someone who's you know trying to do the right thing, but also kind of get it, you know, through loyalties, kind of maybe getting, you know, you know, having to kind of go, you know, go to a place that a dark place that you otherwise probably wouldn't go. And I think a lot of people, you know, there's 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 young black men out there today that kind of feel 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 um, that particular that particular pressure. Uh, can you maybe just speak to just um the, the relevance i feel like your character is very relevant to experiences that a lot of black men have today of just wanting to do the right thing but still kind of you really speak to just the, the relevance of, of your character you know to, to, to today uh yeah I, I think it's it's one of the the big reasons why i was so excited to play this character is the uh the human <laughs> the human in him right like he's uh he's very conflicted in in morals but you know, you have loyalty and, and we, we experience that in life. Like we have people that we grew up with and, you know, we start to, to veer in different ways, but you have the history. And um, I think, like you said, that's why it's gonna hit, uh, I think uh, that, that younger generation because they can relate to this guy. He may look different, it may be a different time, but it's like, yo, I, I, I see what this guy's trying to do. So. Um, yeah, I, I think it's important because of that, because of the relevance and, and that people could see themselves and, and see themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? See mm -hmm. an actual black man that's going through this, this struggle of self-development and loyalty and, and just wanting to appease the people that you care about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and for you, for you, uh, Muna, um, you know, just me watching the the overall show, I I, I I got a feeling I'm like, oh my gosh, this can be like, this could be groundbreaking here. Like, I've never seen anything like this before um, on Canadian television. For you, Muna, or anybody else, do you get do you get that do you get that feeling as you guys are making it that oh my gosh, this could be like this could be groundbreaking for for Canada? Did you did you get that that feeling that sense? I think that's exactly why I wanted to do the project because so many of the characters, so many of their stories are things that I've never seen represented on camera, specifically within a Canadian context. Uh, I worked on a Canadian show called Murdoch Mysteries where I played a character in 1904, but she was so limited, not only because the character, it, like the character takes place in a very white centered world from a white perspective, but um, I just don't think that she was able to sort of expand in the way that Marlene is able to in, through the course of the series. Like we get to see Marlene in so many different spaces. We get to see Junior and Zeke in so many different spaces. And I think that there is yet to be a project that really encapsulates the, the diversity of experience that Black Canadians have had. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I can add to it, uh, the reason why I think it's so huge and groundbreaking is the incorporation of of the deeper culture and like how you hear Junior speaking Patois, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm for, I'm of a Jamaican descent, so I'll be talking and then I'll flip back and forth like it's nothing. But you don't see that on 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 Canadian television. You don't mm -hmm. see that on television. Period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, for that, for people to see that and and see the the magic of our language, 
and 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 stuff like that i i think is, is so great and so beautiful and it's a a part of of um our our culture that not everybody's exposed to so i, I think that's why it's also um groundbreaking because it's it's educating mm -hmm. also, so many different versions of black love i don't know if you guys definitely felt, but yeah absolutely. absolutely but it's it's uh it's powerful you can't stop watching when you do see the love Mm -hmm. No matter what it looks like, it's 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 like it's like art. Definitely. And for you, like for, for you, Muna, like your character is kind of like that. She's like, you know, very upstanding, but she's with this man who, you know, is not necessarily doing the right thing. And to see like the consistency of kind of her, in a sense, being there for him, even though you know she, he he's not necessarily doing things that she may she may stand by, like that kind of that kind of symbol of love is is very um uh, appreciated. And just even going back to the whole idea of just the that is not that for me what, what also stood out wasn't just the the Jamaican accent, but it was the going back and forth. It was like the we kind of had to get closer, like, wait, the, they, they were they're speaking Pato a second ago and now they're kind of in regular English, then they're going back and like yeah. that's what that's what we do all the time. But to see that in a historic like set in a historical context was like, oh shoot, did, did people actually do that? Like it, it, that 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 for me was was um was very interesting. I think what's really special about the show is that it shows black people in private moments and it's not trying to sugarcoat it and mm -hmm. also it offers us the opportunity to not code switch like we're not going to give you a palatable version of like how we speak to each other in private or at home or amongst friends like this is actually how it is mm -hmm. definitely and, and so last question before we go like um just any overall emotions that you're feeling just as this is coming out like is there like this anticipation, pride, like just any kind of emotions that you're kind of feeling um, at the lead up to this being to being re released on February 21st? I'm nervous. I'm proud. I'm sorry, you feel nervous? Oh, yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud. Well, why, 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 why do you feel uh, nervous? Because this is history. Like there are people who are alive today who are going to be watching this and they're going to be thinking about their elders, people in their family, their ancestors. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that we've done them justice and they feel like their history, their experiences are accurately represented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I, and, and I mean, it probably feels a little bit saddened that this is something that we haven't, we hadn't heard about earlier when, when the context of Canadian history, but I'm glad that at least now it's being told. So thank you all very much for, uh, for telling the story. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, and that's it. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, to the episodes coming out. And and uh, yeah, congratulations.